What's up nerds, it's Mason, doing another one of my top whatever lists. Uh, love making lists, love critiquing stuff. Uh, a while ago I did my top 30 movies of all time. I did that in three parts, so if you haven't seen it and you're curious, check those out, my backlog. And now we're doing uh, my top 20 albums of all time. I'm pretty satisfied with this list. Uh, I did a list like this, like right out of high school, um, 10 years ago. And some things have stayed the same. Some have just changed position and some did not make the list uh, 10 years later. So uh, love music, obviously, who doesn't love music? It's, it's a universal language. Lots of music speaks to me. Lots of different genres, genres can speak to me. A lot more music speaks to me than what I will talk about today. Um, but for the most part, these, these stand out the most and the ones that I really wanted to put a spotlight on. Um, I'm mostly inspired by uh, punk rock, metal, rock and roll in general, and all the genres that it encompasses. Um, but I also love rap and hip hop. Um, won't see a lot of it on the top 20 list, but nonetheless, I still do enjoy it. Um, heck, there's a tiny bit of country music I can enjoy. I know 10 years ago I would not have admitted it, but um, you know, classical music, I have a respect for all types of music but some of it uh, speaks to me a lot more than others. Some of it I listen to more frequently. Um, I also, sometimes I feel like um, I cling to the old ways when it comes to music. Sometimes it's hard for me to discover new music. It has to really kind of find me. I don't look for it as much as perhaps I should. Um, I'm kind of guilty of listening to the same stuff over and over again, but you like what you like and I'm a repetitive type person in that way. So. That was just some uh, a foreword before we go into this list. Thank you so much for checking me out, and we'll get us started with my number 20 pick, which is the Marshall Mathers LP by the one and only Eminem on a nice vinyl. Yes, I'm becoming one of those vinyl guys. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I don't own a lot of vinyl. In fact, I pretty much started to buy vinyl for, this, for these videos. Um, you know, when making these lists, I just thought it was that kind of time to start collecting those. Because I always wanted to, but usually comic books uh, win over when it comes to expendable income. But anyway, I uh, found really great deals on vinyl, and I'm actually kind of becoming a little bit, uh, I won't say obsessive, but really uh, into it. Um, so anyway, we're talking about Marshall Mothers LP, goddammit. Uh, number 20 on my list. This album came out in the year 2000. It was uh, released a year after the Slim Shady LP, which is a great album. This one I like more. Um, it's just a more personal record, in my opinion. This was after he gained all of his fame, so he speaks a lot on that and how it has and has not changed him. Um, Eminem is definitely in the running for one of the most influential artists uh, in my life for me. Um, I feel like I was around the perfect age for when he came out to really be... Um, grabbed a hold by him and what he had to say and his whole persona, his whole attitude. Um, I was about 10 years old when he first appeared in the music scene and this one, you know, I would have been 11 or 12 when this came out, but I can remember um, really enjoying it. I would ask, I remember asking for it for Christmas and I would tell my mom, please don't buy it from Walmart, buy it from Target because the Walmarts are edited and fuck all that. And my mom was so cool that she would buy it for me, even at that young age. Um, the parental advisory sticker will really trigger me. I don't feel like albums should be even released, edited. I know that sales is sales, but that's not how the album was meant. That's not how the artist wrote it. I think editing an album is shitty. Uh, same with movies, but whatever, whatever. Um, Eminem, legendary artist. Uh, I'm very passionate about him. I'll always defend him. I think... Um, obviously he has very controversial things to say, but it's free speech and he was definitely one of the pioneers of free speech and music, um, along with him and Marilyn Manson around this time, around the time this came out. Um, it also came, or came out around the Columbine shootings and they received a lot of drama for that. Um, this was the fastest selling, uh, studio album in the U S, um, of all time at, the, at that time. And it went 10 times platinum. So that speaks for itself. Uh, for a favorite song, I would pick The Way I Am. Um, definitely a heavy played radio song, 
but still um, it hasn't lost its flavor for me. It's definitely a very powerful song. Um, I think obviously it's about him, but I think even if you're not a rap fan, it's the kind of song that can still you can still relate to and it can inspire you, I would hope. But anyway, my man Eminem, and this is actually the only hip hop rap album that made it to my list, but had to spotlight my dude. Forever love the M. All right, number 19, get in some metal. I got uh, Soulfly, uh, their album Primitive. Um, this came out in the year 2000 as well. Um, I just love this album all the way through, beginning to end. It's just fucking hard as fuck. I mean, there are some calmer points to it. Um, I really enjoy the soft instrumental in it. There's even some hip hop vibes in it. Um, has great collaborations with Corey Taylor and Chino Marino and um, Tom Mariah from Slayer. Um, so yeah, just can't get enough of this. Great workout album. Uh, my favorite song would be Pain. All right, number 18, we're gonna calm down and get sensitive. I picked um, Bright Eyes. This is a Noise Floor, which might kind of break the rules of albums because it's technically a compilation album. Uh, this was released in 2006, and it's basically a compilation of tracks from 1998 to 2005. Um, unreleased tracks, hard to find tracks, stuff like that by Bright Eyes. Um, a lot of high school memories for this, um, and it still means a lot to me, and I enjoy it for that reason. Um, it's a great road trip album, you know, especially if you're alone and you kind of need some introspective road trip time. Love listening to the album when I do road trips. Um, love it all the way through. Very poetic, uh, kind of sad, but often, you know, sometimes uh, charming songs as well. Um, always enjoyed uh, Connor Oberst's voice and uh, method of songwriting and singing, I guess. He always stood out to me. I um, thought he was definitely a musical pioneer back when I, when I was in high school and uh, did my best not to overlook him. And uh, Bright Eyes had made my list. I also really enjoy I'm Wide Awake It's Morning. I tried to get that one on the list too, but didn't make the cut. But nonetheless, uh, Noise Floor, love this album. Uh, favorite track probably be the tragic Amy in the White Coat. All right, number 17. Let's rock again, man. We got Deftones with Adrenaline. Uh, this is their uh, debut album, and it re was released in 1995. Um, this was the first um, Deftones album that I purchased and really listened to in, in full. Uh, when I first heard Deftones, obviously I would just hear the popular songs. Really enjoyed them, so I thought it's time to go buy an album and learn more about them. I remember going to the record store and finding this one and wanting to buy it because I knew it was their first album. Uh, and from start to finish, it's just pure Deftones. A great place to start if you haven't gotten into the Deftones much. Um, it's I think that it pretty much encompasses the definition of Deftones. Just hard, fast, but also sensitive, emotional. Um, Deftones, like not even the lyrics and the singing, but the whole sound of the Deftones always came off as a really emotional band. Um, it, it, you know, takes you through a broad range of emotions. Even, uh, at least when I listen to it, it does. Uh, love Chino Marino's vocals and love how you know, the whole band puts it all together. Um, uh, all the songs go really well together. If I had to pick a favorite one, I, I pick Birthmark. All right, number 16. Let's get a little funky, I guess. <laughs> I picked uh, Say Anything is a Real Boy, and this one was released in 2004. My first year of high school. Um, my man Max, Max Bemis, songwriter, singer, he's a lyrical madman, I love him so much. Um, for my comic nerds out there, he's, he's written some comic books too. I, uh, I read his recent Moon Knight run and that was a lot of fun. Um, I always enjoy this album just for its unique you know, quality and lyrics. The whole album, you know, it's kind of a, an album about songs, if that makes sense. Um, I, th I think that this album really stands out too because it was 
It was kind of in the midst of a lot of shitty uh, pop punk bands at the time. It was kind of hard to pick uh, the really good ones and this one I think was a treasure in the midst of all the trash at that time, in my opinion. Um, so don't overlook this one and my dudes from Say Anything. Uh, all these songs are hilarious. Still love listening to this album. Um, Again, hard to pick a favorite one, but uh, I tend to go with The Writhing South. Love it, Max. All right, number 15. I picked um, Disturbs Believe, which was released in 2002. This is their second uh, studio album. Um, the first album was, you know, an awesome album, uh, great hit songs on it, but I always uh, felt more of a connection to Believe. Um, I think that it's a little bit more, you know, obviously spiritual. Um, it's not like a crazy like Christian or religious album or anything like that, otherwise I wouldn't be into it. Um, but it's just about um, finding what you believe in, um, learning about yourself, I think, um, philosophically. I think that um, it really, shows a different side to the band. Uh, it still rocks hard, really kick-ass tracks. Um, another great album that I like to listen to uh, in the gym. Um, I remember this was one of the main CDs that I always had in my Walkman when I was walking to and from school. I definitely wore it out. I also remember um, uh, a while ago reading an article where David Draymond said that this, this was his favorite um, album that the band has done, the greatest work that they've done. He was going through a lot of personal issues um, during this time, so a lot of that comes out in the album. Um, I haven't uh, been keeping up as much with Disturb, but their first three albums will always stand out to me, and of course, especially this one, Still Kicks Ass, and my favorite track will be Bound. All right. And then we're down to number 14, guys, and I got another vinyl. Yeah, Slipknot, self-titled album. I'm from Iowa, so of course Slipknot means a lot to me. Um, this album came out in 1999. It celebrated its 20th anniversary a few weeks ago, so congrats to the band. Um, obviously great album. This uh, album was named the best debut album in the past 25 years by Metal Hammer magazine. Uh, that was an article that came out in 2011, but I thought that was a cool tidbit. Um, very controversial album at the time, and it was pretty much my first exposure to metal. Um, remember, my stepsister was really into the band, and that's how I got into them, um, along with my dad. Um, I don't know if they'd mean as much to me if they weren't from Iowa, but I don't think that they'd be the band that they are if they weren't from Iowa, so it's kind of a moot point in my opinion. Um, I think they're, they perform even on an album like a live show band. I think though know, they're passionate about putting on a show um, and being visual artists as well as you know musical artists. Um, definitely a very unique uh, band in the world of metal. You know, eight guys jamming out, rocking hard, getting nuts. Um, I'll always love Slipknot. And probably it's right, they're right up there with Eminem with the most influential artists in my life. Oh yeah. 666, six, six, baby. And I'd have to go with uh, Spit It Out as my favorite song. Uh, the whole thing, I think it's sick. All right. Uh, 13. We'll get a little softer now. I picked uh, Everywhere in His Nasty Parlor Tricks by Modest Mouse. Who doesn't love Modest Mouse, man? Um, a very short and sweet album. Uh, really no hit songs on this compared to their other albums. Um, you know, even my favorite Modest Mouse songs are on other albums, but we're talking about albums as a whole. Um, and this one always stands out to me. Um, another great road trip album, just a soft, kind of simple album, but still wise and um, powerful in its own way. Uh, I remember out of high school, I used to deliver newspapers and I'd get home around like 4 a.m., you know, in the deep morning. 
the introspective morning and I'd lay in bed and I remember enjoying putting this album on and listening to it as I was trying to fall asleep. Um, to pick a favorite song, it would be Night on the Sun. Uh, number 12, I got uh, System of a Down's Toxicity, which was released in 2001. Um, this album is very politically charged. Uh, they definitely have a lot to say as a band. I remember Chop Suey was banned on the radio after 9-11 happened. Um, lots of songs about um, the bad state of the prison system. Uh, how low charge drug offenders are in prison. Um, there was a song about the Charles Manson trial and his uh, supposed wrongful imprisonment. Um, songs about CIA pro CIA protesters and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, definitely always have a lot to say. Always appreciated them for that. Always appreciated that um, for how politically charged they were, they were still mainstream. So they're able to get those messages to uh, the youth, um, who, and I think that they can educate in that aspect. So good for them for being commercially successful. Um, yeah, and I like that they're very unique sounding. Um, sometimes metal bands can kind of sound the same, um, but you always know it's System of a Down, uh, at least to me, whenever you hear them. Um, and my favorite song, the fucking Shimmy. All right, last one, number 11. Uh, I picked, let's, let's finally get some punk rock. And it's Rancid's and Out Come the Wolves. Oh yeah. Tons of sweet tracks on this bad boy. Uh, this album was released in 1995. Um, the album title refers to, um, so at that time, they were gaining a lot of momentum and popularity, so a lot of major record labels were bidding for uh, to, su to uh, support the band, to sign the band, blah, blah, blah. And so, hence the title, And Out Come the Wolves. It also refers to a poem by Jim Carroll uh, from the, the basketball, from Jim Carroll's The Basketball Diaries, uh, which is one of my favorite movies. So anyway, um, Rancid, um, some, some maybe hardcore punkers might not consider it like, you know, real punk. It's more pop punky or whatever, um, which I tend to disagree with. I think that it's very punk in all of its roots. I mean, it might be a little catchier or whatever. Just depends on your opinion, I guess. Whatever. Um, but definitely true punk rockers, punk rock music guys. Uh, love every track. Love everything they have to say. Uh, Love how it gets me charged up whenever I listen to it. Love listening listening to it from start to finish. Um, love the music videos. Love the way they look, the way they perform. Love Rancid. Um, they were, they definitely helped the momentum of punk rock in the mid 90s, along with bands like Green Day and The Offspring. Um, it kept um, the attitude of punk um, alive, um, in my opinion. So definitely a very important uh, CD and band at the time, and still is, man. Um, but yeah, um, if I had to pick a favorite song, it would be a Junkie Man. Tell me what y'all's story is. Punk's not dead, guys. So yeah, that's albums 20 to 11 for this first part. Again, thank you guys for checking me out. would love to know what you think in the comments, what some of your favorites are, whatever. Uh, so yeah, keep rocking guys. See you in my next one.